yo 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 What's happening? And we got our guest host joining us. We, of course, uh, have Angela Rye, who's back. Eddie Rye, daughter. Is. What's happening? Good morning. Good morning. And now we have Tiffany Cross. She's uh, stepped in, and uh, she's going to be a, a second guest host this morning. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I call myself Eddie Rye's honorary daughter. So. Okay. Good morning, everybody. There you go. Good morning. Drop the clues bombs for Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross. Then. Yes. It is a Friday. And it's a freaky, freaky, freaky Friday as well. That's right. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Young we'll Miami gave later. us a... A great freaky freaky oh, Friday sure. topic. A couple of them. A couple of them. Which way you want to go? We talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so no. many of them. And all, also, uh, Eli Manning will be checking in. Nobody oh, cares. Yes, everybody Nobody cares. cares. Of course, the that. Giants will be playing this week, and they will be beating the Eagles this Saturday, 8-15. Allegedly. No, they will be. All right, so he'll be checking in. We'll be talking about playoffs and all that other stuff. And does your Cowboys play? Or did they lose already? Of course my Cowboys play this I'm weekend. Just cool. They play the San Francisco 49ers. Stop playing with us, okay? Okay. It'll be short-lived. Very short-lived. All right, well, let's get the show. Why are you looking at me like that? You're just being disrespectful for no reason. Oh, well, it's the Cowboys. But I don't have no expectations for my Cowboys. See, the difference between me and you is you have expectations for I the do. Giants. <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy the moment. Okay. That's it. All right, well, we got front page news. Next, what are we talking about? We are going to talk about Kamala Harris going to Tallahassee, Florida mm -hmm. for an abortion rally. And we're also going to talk about Ron DeSantis and that doggone Stop Woke Act again. Why we ain't talking about the cyber attack that happened to the banks? We got to talk about that, too, at You want to talk about that some yeah. more? Yeah. Okay. We talked about it yesterday? You don't remember talking about Bank of America yesterday? <laughs> yes, I don't yes remember. you did. You, get, you don't remember? We, he, remember we kept saying he was not here I'm yesterday. I was at he the was doctor like, yesterday. Huh? They huh? said, I got borderline high cholesterol. <laughs> what's borderline yeah, wait, high what's cholesterol? What's borderline? What did he say? I got it or not? What did he say? He's like, I got borderline high cholesterol. I'm not getting enough sleep. So, you know, I'm officially old out here, bro. I don't okay. mean you gotta forget like that. We had a whole kind about banking black. Maybe we need to bank black again. I gotta drink. Uh, take my jinko below, but then and how check you pronounce your it? Account. I'm not like that. You don't ever pronounce anything <laughs> right, but that's all right. Okay, y'all know right. what I mean. Well, front page news is next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We have our guest host this morning, Tiffany Cross and Angela Rye. Mm -hmm. And let's get in some front page news. Now, NFL over the weekend, of course, playoffs. Jaguars take on the Chiefs. The Giants will wash the Eagles. Or are you confident? Bills take on the Bengals and Cowboys take on the 49ers. I mean, right. You're supposed to be confident, but I don't see the Giants beating the Eagles. And you don't you don't really believe do. that either. But you supposed to root for your team. They I gave am. you they gave you a, a a helmet this week too. They gave me a helmet this week. That's Eli right. Eli's calling in this morning. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. What else we got, Miss Ra? So mad. I don't care about any of this because my Seahawks lost. But anyway, what I do care about is the 50th anniversary of Roe versus Wade. There is a um, a rally in Tallahassee, Florida, that uh, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris will be joining. This Sunday, um, to commemorate the anniversary of Roe, and sadly, as you all know, the Supreme Court, of course, reversed um, that a really important decision mm -hmm. for women with the Dobbs decision last summer, in Dobbs mm -hmm. versus Jackson. But speaking of Florida and going backwards, mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis is at it again. Oh, God. So Ron DeSantis is blocking the College Board's African American Studies AP curriculum. He's claiming that it violates Florida's new Stop Woke Act. Y'all know what Stop Woke means? <laughs> yes. Yeah. This what is stupid. I do hate wokeness, though. I think that oh, a lot of these woke people need to get a nap. They need a nap. But the okay. way they're using woke yeah, is not the way totally you're using woke. Here's, here's the acronym. Stop the Wrongs to Our Kids and Employees Act. No, do you really think that Ron DeSantis cares about stopping no. the wrongs to the kids and Not to the employees? All. Come on now. Mm -mm. So at first blush, this sounds like something we should all agree on, right? Mm -hmm. um, until you get clarity on how they defined wrong in this bill. Stop woke proponents have a dangerously broad definition what is it? of critical race theory, which, by the way, is not a bad or negative thing. I took mm -hmm. critical race theory in college. Mm -hmm. um, it helped me to understand colorblindness actually can be racist. Mm -hmm. um, and, for example, this administration is challenging this course on the grounds that it violates the act. And in the letter to the college board, it says, as presented, the content of this course is inexplicably contrary to Florida law and significantly lacks educational value. And further, it states, in the future, should college board be willing to come back to the table with lawful, historically accurate content, um, FDOE will always be willing to reopen the discussion. Now, I want y'all to know, 
When I was in high school, there was an AP European history class, mm-hmm. right? They have... A, Otherwise a, known as history. Right. How about that? They, you, you talk about Asian history, all these things. Yeah. But all of a sudden, when it comes to an African-American studies class, that's going to violate it? Right. Yeah. It sounds to me like he wants white people to continue teaching our kids the BS black history they've been teaching us in schools. Yeah. No, or BS history they've been teaching us yeah. in schools to the point about mm-hmm. George Washington having wooden teeth in his mouth. Mm-hmm. Right. About uh, slavery. <laughs> like mm-hmm. Kanye, slavery was a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, like all of these crazy... Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That dude was lost. Right. Mm-hmm. That's how folks got called Indians. Mm-hmm. I mean, the last time we talked about Florida, Charlemagne, you know how I feel about Florida. Yes. <laughs> so, I, this is very consistent. <laughs> that is true. I, I think the, the scary part of this is is DeSantis is widely considered the front runner of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. So the more obnoxious yeah. he can be, the better it is for his base. This uh, class that he's trying to cancel, it doesn't just focus on um, black history. It teaches history. It teaches culture. It teaches yeah. politics. It teaches geography. So the baffling thing is, why you want your kids to be dumb? You know, mm-hmm. you right. literally want your kids to be dumber than my kids. And I think the larger subtext to this is, it is hard to talk about the system of whiteness to white people Mm -hmm. when you have people in positions of power who value white feelings more than they do truth, fact, or our very lives. And Ron DeSantis is the poster child for Mm -hmm. that kind of BS. Mm -hmm. And if we don't stop him, because Florida, I mean, it used to be a purple state. Now it's pretty much solid red. But I think if if somebody does not stop these kind of draconian policies, that we're going to see it cast a dark shadow over all American uh, education. I would like like to see what he considers an acceptable black history History to be taught acceptable African American history. Oh, probably the way that they whitewashed Dr. King, right? That's what I'm yeah. Yeah. Like, that's Martin Luther King, that's it. Malcolm X. And they're, that like, was they're like, no, they're not gonna give you Malcolm X. They gave supporter. us Malcolm X in school. They gave us a little no, bit of Malcolm. Not, not in Florida. Did. Oh, not in Florida. They're not gonna give. Did you, you have a black history? They give you DMX in Florida before they give you Malcolm X. <laughs> no, this is an important question. In high school, yeah. Did you have a black history teacher? Mm-mm. No, and you still had a teacher that taught you. Are you saying a black history teacher? No, like a black teacher who was teaching history. Context though, he went to school in Queens. Queens mm-hmm. is right here, New York, Harlem. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, no. I, but I went to Catholic Malcolm. school, so we didn't get that. We went to we, we just learned Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Rosa but it's still Parks. New York is what I'm saying. Rosa Parks, that was it. But then I went to Hampton, and then it was all you know, it was all in yeah, Hampton. Yeah, we yeah, dove yeah. into it, but in New York. Middle school, we learned a lot, but high school, we didn't. Yeah, they're not going to tell you about Marcus Garvey. They're not going to mm-hmm. tell you about Did Mark Vesey. Like, nope. none of that's going to happen. No, nope, no. Nope. It was Rosa that's, Parks, Martin Luther King, and, and Little Malcolm X. That probably is what DeSantis wants. Just Martin Luther King. Keep mm-hmm. it to Just, the king. No, really. And they've used Martin Luther King's legacy to say that he wouldn't have even supported affirmative action because he wants you to be judged by the content of your character. So this is a problem. Stop woke that. Maybe you need Ron DeSantis to go to sleep since you want wokeness to be sleepy. I'm going to vote for Ron DeSantis in 2024 just to piss you Shut off. Up. No, you're not. All you're right. so we silly. Were and that <laughs> is your front silly. page news. Did you hear about the uh, New York City police officers that were having sex in the car in the parking lot? I did hear about that. So they were having sex in the parking lot. Uh, a neighbor heard a woman yelling. So she, she called the, woman the police. Was for help. So that man she was thought the woman was screaming for help. Yeah. So the police come down there and it's the police department parking lot and two police officers were having sex. Yeah, tax wow. dollars. They both Sorry got suspended. Work. Yeah, they both got suspended. Hard at work. No that pun That man intended. was putting in work. Hard at work. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you ready for Freaky Friday. Right on, Jesus. Right on you. All right. Great. You thought the woman was screaming for help. That's right. Damn, mind your business. Get okay. it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to uh, vent, phone lines are wide open. It's a Friday. So hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up. Wake up. Wake your ass this is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? This is Jarvis. How you doing? Jarvis, what up? Get it off your chest, brother. Yo, I, I really I am upset about this whole thing in Florida about the, the first of all, the Wolf Act. What is that? Is the Wolf Act? It sounds dumb, first of all, because you can't be woke if you're not going to, in America, talk about a true black history. Two black histories that they, they put white people, that they, not white people, I'm sorry, but the things that they put the, the white people, put black people through is true black history in America. Yeah, it's true. Yes, Amer- that, that, that is true American history. That's right. What they say, Charlie? I said that is true American history. What they did to black people in this country is part of American history, whether they like it or not. And the question, yeah, but they won't teach it. They won't teach us about it. They won't teach us any. And and, and if you're smart enough to actually learn about all this stuff when you earn, like the young lady said, Columbus was lost. He didn't actually discover anything. He was lost. <laughs> but they're not gonna tell you that. They're not gonna tell you that George Washington actually owned slaves. They're not gonna tell you that stuff. 
But they'll tell you, oh, George Washington is the first president and all of that crap. They'll tell you all the good stuff that they did, but they won't tell you any of the things that they actually did to our people. Well, and the problem that we have is we often wait for somebody to tell us, and I'm so glad that you're outraged. Sometimes that's the very thing that we need to motivate us to move to action, right, to do something about it. So what? how can we turn that outrage into something positive for these kids? We can, you know, have teach-ins and make sure they're learning when their teachers won't teach them and when their, their school books are used to teach them lies. That's been happening for centuries. And flood the area with banned books. Mm -hmm. the, all the books they're trying to ban, which includes most of Toni Morrison's book, who's considered a, an American treasure. Yeah. Hello, who's this? Oh, f no. Amy, you can't Who be cursing. Amy. Amy, you, you, you just can't gonna be come cursing, out the gate cursing. You ain't even brush your teeth yet. That's the wild part. Oh, but the funny thing is, I just did. Oh, okay. And and I used some Listerine. Hey. Okay. Is it? <laughs> Congratulations. Oh no! Is this Charlotte? Is this? This ain't Charlamagne the God, is it? Who you? Why are you calling the Breakfast Club if you don't expect to talk to us? I didn't expect it. I called like okay, all right. I called twice. It was busy, and I said I'm gonna try one more time. Well, you got but through, man. You got through, Amy. Get it off your chest, Mama. It's really nothing on my chest. I oh, feel like it's Lord. a sister. She just got home. But you just wanted to say good morning. All right. There's nothing on your chest. What about yeah. the hair? The hell? It was peeling here. How do you know what's peeling here? <laughs> You got hair on your so, chest? She said, oh, she, she <laughs> just got home from the club. I said, hell no. I said, hell no. Oh, okay. Where you at? Where you, you calling from? She just got home from the club. I could tell. That's what I'm saying. No, that's a, that's a, that is the most ironic thing. I'm sober because I've been on the Advocare diet and Advocate. I haven't been drinking, you know, that much. What's the Advocare diet? She said that much. <laughs> What's the Advocare diet? <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, no added Africa. sugar. No <laughs> you just made that up? Yeah. Oh. I, gave the, I gave them African boys up, man. They cheated. Man, you all over the place, man. Jesus. How many Jesus. African boys did you have? I don't, I didn't, I only had one. Oh, too much for you? Oh, no. No, I have a, okay, I I have a 23-year-old daughter at that school. That's what? neither here nor there. This is not what the call's about. I don't know what this call Nobody is. Well, Amy, you have a good morning, man. And, and please don't drink and drive. <laughs> Honey, I'm, I'm not drinking and driving. Good. You sound mobile. All right. Well, have a good day, have Amy. Have a good day. Where you calling from? Got to be Florida. <laughs> no, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Okay, okay. All right. Well, have a good one, mama. Blessings to be you. Be safe. All right. Peace out. Jesus. Amy was hanging up before the call started. Yeah, as soon as I heard it. Back. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Priscilla. Hey, Priscilla. From where? Ah, yes. I was calling to get something off my chest. I was listening to you guys this morning. You guys are absolutely right. But I'm going to say this first. The suit that DeSantis wears is not truly the suit he wants to wear. And somebody will get that when they know down the road somewhere. No. Anyway. No, you ain't going to hear from one of them old Florida parables. Now, explain what you mean by that. Explain what you mean by that. I said, I'm past 50. I'll put it that way. But um, what I was going to say is that even though they don't do our kids right in educating them in black history, we can do that at home. A lot of the stuff that I we agree. leave up to these teachers and the system to teach to our kids as parents, it starts at home. I agree. We can yep. teach them, make them aware, and so they're not blindsided. You know what I'm saying? They're like, you know, they don't know their history. It starts at home, love. And I want to say you guys are doing a wonderful job. You don't give us what we want to hear. You give us what we need to hear. Can okay. I before you hang up? Can I ask you a question? Sure. Are, are you a registered you voter? Sure? And, are you a registered yes, voter? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm a registered voter that's active. Yes. And do you vote in the local school board elections? I, I vote. Yes, I do. Yes. Because guess what? My kids are grown, but guess what? I got nieces, nephews, grandkids. So yes. That's good to hear. Because I'm lot not going to speak something I don't act on. Yeah, and no, a lot no. of times they use the school board elections as a launching pad yeah. to advance a lot of these conservative policies. So that's good to hear. I hope you encourage your friends and family and neighbors to do the same. Hello, who's this? Oh, nah. What's going on? I'm, I'm tired of y'all acting fake surprise like Taylor Swift when she went in a war. Y'all know y'all <laughs> calling up here. Y'all know who y'all calling the Breakfast Club. Bro. What's your name, bro? Uh, LSM, man. What's well, up, LSM? by my phone name, Judah. Okay. Oh, boy. What's up, Judah? 
I got it home for y'all. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we don't know. You gotta ask us if we wanna hear it first. Well, well, Charlie, would you like to hear my poem? No. Hi, <laughs> uh, I'm the angel. Bye. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Judah Ellison? Uh, I'm all right. You know, I'm a cool young black man. Come on, man. Give I'm us your poem. Give us your poem. Come on, brother. Give us your poem. Go. I, 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 I. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, oh, okay. Jesus. Life is beauty. Shorty is me. Esoteric. He's speaking and seeing your cancer to see. My pen mundane, but art oh, is your free. You flew it from the ground up, who didn't see? He, he, I knew you. You like Kool Aid. Leave me, leave me. Oh, yeah, Kool Aid man's voice. Hear that flavor, that flavor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joy, laid back as always. Pressure me, but no fear. Flexing you up, telling me that it was near. Baby girl caressing you up, unzipping. Oh, Judah, for free. Nah. Okay. Judah, what's plan B, King? Hey, what else do you do? What's plan B, bro? Mmm. Write a poem about it and figure it out. <laughs> figure out your next steps in life, okay? Have a good one. <laughs> All right, brother. Jesus. Poor Judah. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back, we got your rumor report. We got to tell you about Young Thug. It might not be a good idea to pass Young Thug drugs in the middle of trial. You know, oh, that, people calling that dumb, but that's actually sad. We're, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. We got our guest host with us this morning on this Friday. We have uh, Miss Angela Rye. Hey. Hey. And Tiffany Cross. Welcome. Hey. All right. Well, let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Alec Baldwin. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, I don't know if you remember last year, Alec Baldwin was shooting a movie. It had to do something with involving a gun. It wasn't all he was shooting. And oh, the gun God. accidentally went off and he killed a young lady. So now uh, they're saying prosecutors will be charging Alec Baldwin with two counts of involuntary manslaughter in the killing of this young that woman. That is absolutely wrong. That is not the right thing to do. How how you charge somebody for manslaughter when they're on a movie set doing their job it's somebody else's job to load the gun. He's just acting. Mm -hmm. How's he supposed to know that the gun was loaded? How do you charge well, him with a gun? Charged the gun was charged yeah, as well. She, she's was, charged as two well. Two counts of manslaughter. Well, they said he wasn't supposed to pull the trigger, and they said he they believed he pulled the trigger. He said he didn't pull the trigger. But, um, you know, I was doing East New York. Of, of course, I'm, I'm not a regular on East New York. Before but I've been there a couple times. Job. No, it's not before I got my nose job. But they take it really serious. Any, any scene with the gun... They make everybody actually check the gun. So the actor checks the gun. The police officer checks the gun to make sure there's no bullets in the gun. Then they don't point the gun directly at you. They point it to the side. So it looks like it's at you, but it's never facing you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how this happened because they is so much protocol so that that gun can never shoot you. So there's never a bullet in it. So I really don't know. Angela Rye, you're the lawyer. They didn't. He didn't shoot at the at the actor. He shot at the cinematographer. That's Camera. who got killed. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. who got killed. So that may have been a little off. Mm. But oh, so he's like playing around like he was like waving the gun or no, no it no, was no. they were in scene they were rolling it was mm -hmm. in production and he shot he says he, he pointed the gun he says he never pulled the trigger but it's one of those shots you know if the camera's pointing at you when you hold the gun mm -hmm. like that he says he never pulled the trigger the sad part about this story is the woman who was shot left behind a child yeah. and his son mm -hmm. they have no idea you know the well-being of this child emotionally mm -hmm. or financially right whoever put real ammo in the gun is the one who should be held liable if you ask well, she's charged. She's being charged. Yeah, she's charged. Yeah. I, I don't see how the actor gets charged they, in this situation. Well, there should be no live rounds on set either. <laughs> Duh. And, and they, <laughs> they, they found uh, five more live rounds, but there should be no live rounds. That's crazy. How do you make that kind of... That's so many mistakes. Like, yeah. at every point, there's a mistake. I feel like... I don't want to lie on them or engage in misinformation, but mm -hmm. I feel like Alec Baldwin did something else that was... I don't here. know. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to look that up. So, mm -hmm. sorry, y'all. I don't want to be lying on nobody. I don't know if I'm Alex. I'm suing everybody. I think his yeah. name is Alec. Yeah, Alec. What up? Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Now also, Alex. <laughs> Young Thug was in court yesterday, and while he was in court, his co-defendant uh -huh. allegedly passed him a Percocet. Now investigators say Thug was sitting next to his attorney when Adams approached him and shook his hand, and it was that moment that Adam allegedly slipped Thug a Percocet. Now we actually hear from Thug's attorney, right? Um, the reality is Mr. Williams had nothing to, with what, to do with what went on in the courtroom on yesterday. Um, one of the co-defendants on his way to the restroom attempted to pass something to Mr. Williams, who immediately turned it over to the deputy. 
Um, he did not know it was allegedly I Percocet? Did not know. Well, we don't know what it is. Um, did not know what it was. Turned it over to the deputy right away. Um, the deputies took action. Uh, the individual who had the contraband, not Mr. Williams, uh, was taken into the back where I'm told he ingested whatever he had. He had to be taken to the hospital. Be and as a result, right court was okay. terminated for the rest of the day. Yeah, he had Percocet, marijuana, tobacco, uh, wrapped in plastic and, and spread out with food seasonings uh, to conceal the odor. Lemon pepper. Now, before we get into how we feel <laughs> about this situation, mm -hmm. I overheard you telling somebody how you would have uh, snuck the contraband in. And you wouldn't never tell me nothing like that because you know I would do exactly what I'm doing right now. Bring it to the radio. But I overheard you. So I want to give you the opportunity to come clean, King. Tell the people how you said you would have snuck the contraband. Let me tell you something. Don't ever yo, tell Lenard a secret. Yo. I overheard him. That? Somebody told you that. I overheard you. you. I was like, wow. Rumor report. I was just in the office typing. I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm hearing what I'm hearing. What did you say, NP? I said if I needed a Percocet that bad, mm -hmm. I would just have to go all the way out with it. Mm -hmm. Don't pass it to me. Just kiss me and spit it in my mouth. Mm. Oh. Drop on the clues bombs for envy, oh. damn it. Okay. Wow. You're living his truth. Who's gonna stop that? <laughs> At the trial? I don't think it goes down like that in the court. He passed a minute with his hand. Well, he shouldn't have done that either. <laughs> You were gonna get somebody tased. Oh like you can't goodness. be engaged in all that How physical did you contact. I was joking out there. How did you hear that? That ain't sound like no joke to me. Oh you sounded dead serious. What do you think, Tiff? I mean, young thug. <laughs> he, look, he did hand the substance right over right to over the deputy yes. immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm more concerned about the brazen disrespect of the young man to hand this to him, and I. You know, there's something about being young where maybe life is abstract to you that mm -hmm. you don't really take seriously the consequences of your actions. But that young man is going to face increased charges. Now, he was already um, being, you know, co defendant. Uh, yeah. Right. Exactly. With the RICO charges. And to add this, it doesn't help his case at all. And it's really sad to see. I think Angela brought up a good point about it punctuates the issue of addiction yes. Yes. in our community. Yes. It yeah. is. And it's not even just in our community. We're seeing this running rampant all throughout this country. And I think we really have to take a look at what is going on. Going on, they're willing to risk it all yeah. right. at this trial right. for, for whatever this this high was, whatever this numbing feeling is. We have to really look at what what's going on with addiction. So yeah. if, I, if I'm a judge, I have to factor that in, right? Like this brother might have an addiction problem. These things he's being accused of, if true, could be fueled by drugs. Yeah. You hope you hope, hope the, the judge, judge would do right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe jail isn't the solution. Maybe it's in Tinchery has. Jail likely is not the solution, but no, unfortunately, never we, are, we are subjected to a very punishing criminal justice system in this country, sadly. Yeah. So if you're a lawyer, wouldn't you use that to thugs and vices? It's, it's not only point? drugs. Well, the There's murder is, is more than just drugs. It's not just a Percocet you're, case. You're or, trying or to say that case. it's impairing judgment, yes. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I think that there is some truth to that. It sounds mm -hmm. like Young Thug's attorney is not willing to use that as a mitigating fact in this case mm -hmm. because he's like, we didn't even know what this was, man. Now, that's ridiculous. Mm. I didn't even know you could walk up to somebody and hand them something. I didn't think so either. Like, I didn't think you could get that close. That's why you can't kiss them neither. I mean, that's you can't give nobody hand. Though. But I'm like, if you oh, want to go that far, no, you I'm can't. Just go all the way. Yeah, you can't do it. But you're looking to get somebody tased. No, I get what they be saying though, <laughs> but because it, it'll cause so much commotion. <laughs> right. And now I already got the perk. The perk you know what I mean? But it's also thug. It's not like people can be like, oh. You got a how are we gonna talk about addiction and then tell people how they could get the Percocet? Don't you think that's a little oh, bad? I thought we were talking about love. What? <laughs> Good night. All right. He's still asleep. He's still asleep. I thought sleep, you were Envy. talking about love, and, man. And that is your rule. You need report. to stay woke. <laughs> Two brothers kissing in the courtroom. That would just be. It, it would be so shocking. Nobody would even think about it. You look and get somebody to take. <laughs> right? Would it? It'd be a hell of a distraction. Right. You know, it would be. All right. Well. All right, that is your room report. Front page news is next. What are we talking? Give me a little tease. All right, so, uh, you know, the State of the Union is coming up with President mm -hmm. Biden, and it's rumored that he's going to make his re-election announcement oh, shortly boy. after the State of the we Union. No. I know. I mean, it's record-breaking. He's going to be one of the um, oldest presidents to ever do it. But what's interesting to me about this is on the counter side. So um, we're still, everybody's waiting to see what Trump will do. Mm -hmm. And I, people are saying don't count out Trump, but he's probably the only Republican that Biden would be able to beat at this point. The interesting thing about this is people are talking about what will evangelicals do now when people write Hold about on, evangelicals it's called a tease this is a tease you give, you oh, give me more than a tease now. Right she said that right. Right. goodness gracious well that's that's what I'll leave it on All right. the evangelicals what will they do we'll All right. get into that we'll talk about that next it's the breakfast club good morning the breakfast club your mornings will never be the same
Your company has goals this year. Find the right people to help you achieve them with ZipRecruiter, where four out of five employees get a quality candidate within the first day. Try it free at ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. B-R-E-A-K-F-A-S-T. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest hosts, Tiffany Cross and Angela Rod, joining us this morning. Hey. Let's get in some front page news. And Eli Manning will be checking in uh, in Nobody a little bit. Cares, of course, bro. he's the uh, so this is a ex quarterback of the New York Giants, two time Super, Super Bowl champion. Yes, he'll be checking in a little Nobody bit. Nobody cares, bro. Everybody cares. Cowboys got a black we quarterback. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I would have cared if it was about the Seahawks. I don't care. All I just right. don't follow football. Anymore. All right. Well, let's get into some football. I right, now the, uh, Jaguars. told you she don't care. I got to tell <laughs> you what the game is. As the Jaguars taking on the Chiefs tomorrow at 430. My Giants will bust the Eagles' ass tomorrow at 815. Well, you sound the Bengals ambitious. take on the Bills. And your Cowgirls will be taking on the 49ers Sunday at 630. Don't misgender people. <laughs> oh, that's good Why for you. Why are you misgendering that's people? That's good, Lenard. Okay. You follow that. <laughs> Whoa. All right, now, <laughs> Miss Tiffany Cross. Yeah, all right, continue. I'm going to get into it. So I told you before the break that Biden is uh, rumored to announce his re-election plans after February 7th. Now, before we get into do we think Biden should run again, mm-hmm. on the flip side, there's the Republican candidate, Trump. People are saying don't count him out, but he might be the only candidate that Biden can beat. Here's the thing. Evangelicals largely support him. When we say that, though, the white is often silent because I think mm-hmm. a lot of us grew up Southern Baptist and a lot of black folks consider themselves evangelicals but in the press it's exactly Mm -hmm. exactly Mm -hmm. so the interesting thing about the evangelicals is only 30 percent or so actually go to church Mm -hmm. so i'm confused about how you call yourself evangelicals and a lot of the beliefs and policies they support are not very Mm christ-like which Uh. leads me to a church actually doing something right uh angela and i were talking about during the break in england um the church of england is actually investing a hundred million dollars um, into a reparations fund essentially because they heavily invested in a company that transported slaves. Now, as you know, Envy, Angela, Charlemagne, and I were in Ghana uh, mm-hmm. over the holidays, and mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you all. Did you go to the strip club with them? No, I did not. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know but happy to talk about strip clubs for sure. <laughs> okay. uh, it is Freaky Friday after all. Hey. But um, the the looking at how um, that the, the the brutality of the way white people yeah. beat the humanity out of us and beat this. Christianity um, into a people that did not know that religion and how they like they it was like perverted how they did it. They actually had a church on top of a dungeon yeah. where yeah. people were essentially left to die. We wow. we were on that tour together. It was so heavy. I think all of yeah. us probably shed tears. So I coming back to this country and hearing mm-hmm. even the term evangelical and seeing some of these people purport to be Christ like and purport to be loving while upholding white supremacy. Uh, it's just kind of disgusting to yeah. experience uh, on on the heel. Of that, so even of the democracy itself, you know, yeah, it's like you're this wasn't worshiping built for God, us. but people down in the dungeons uh, being tortured and but dying. You're, you're literally saying left to die. Church of England is doing a hundred, a hundred million dollar fund. We of course talked about the reparations plan that was presented in San Francisco mm-hmm. yesterday. I mean, there are moves getting made like across the globe, and I think that that's something that we should be looking forward to. Like, is there really going to be something that creates some type of equity after everything that our people have experienced? in this country and throughout the world. Mm-hmm. Every slave ship didn't come to America. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right? And that's the thing that we've got to remember. So this is, I think this is a big deal. The Don't unique you- thing though about this, the America, like the, the slave trade enriched the UK, mm-hmm. but they, yeah. they shipped their enslaved off. America has a unique uh, story of mm-hmm. building this country and, you know, the, the rape of black women and how that upheld this country as a superpower. In the UK, black people can't really say, well, we built this country. They just enriched it. Mm -hmm. And so there is this belief that, you know, well, maybe black Americans just don't try as hard um, among some other uh, black people Mm -hmm. in the diaspora. And it's like they don't understand living in and under a system of white supremacy that has been crushing to us economically, spiritually, mentally, morally, Mm -hmm. um, and even when it comes to uh, justice and and politics and policy wise. So um, the beautiful thing about it is having these conversations, open conversations with Ghana. I really felt like in Ghana, I don't know if y'all felt this way, but I felt like people were like, what y'all doing? over there like come home you know <laughs> no. like come yeah, come, yeah. They, mm. like they make it so easy for citizenship and I mean if we're talking, oh, talking about, about in Ghana I thought you Ghana. meant back here people are like come back <laughs> no, home why you Ghana, going there they, right back. they were like come here and if you think about it if this hundred million dollars I think if you can prove your ancestry connects to Ghana yeah. that these funds America too it should be we'll give you three hundred thousand dollars 
to come over here mm-hmm. and build and set up a land and build that democracy instead of upholding the white ghetto trash we have here right. having, you know, on Capitol Hill. Now, Don't y'all think it's ambitious of Biden, too, to be announcing his future plans? I was going to ask you, like, do you think he should age? be tested? Do you think he should be tested before he's able to announce that he should be able to run? <laughs> tested for, for what? do you mean tested? For what? Yeah. Yeah. Dementia. <laughs> Why well, come dementia. nobody? I don't. I don't understand. I don't like, think so. Yeah. No. Why? I mean, do, do, are, are you suggesting that he? Have you seen something that suggests that he has dementia? Yes. I saw him talking to a ghost. Yeah, he was talking. <laughs> He, he was talking right. to the ghost. He forgets a lot. There's times where he, he looks confused, doesn't know where he, he's Did you walking. See him in the church the other they, day? they write things on his hand and on napkins. Well, that was so a he black knows. church. He yeah, I write stuff out of his on element. napkins. But he writes things on napkins like "Leave after this, look left." Like the man was saying, oh, "Happy birthday so, to somebody," guys, and forgot the person's name. Yes, like oh, he, that's normal too. <laughs> no, Let me, it's not. Yes, it is. It's very I, normal. I think that happens. Let me say this mm-hmm. about the the leave after. That's a staffer passing him a note, and I'll tell you this for a fact, like. Capitol Hill, we have to do all kinds of things to our boss, like write in big letters to our boss, time to go, you gotta go vote. They sound very basic to people that run every part, every aspect of their lives. You getting baptized he, on fire with this right now. But he be spoke a, to a ghost. He yes. spoke to a person that wasn't there. And and when they gave him the directions when he was leaving, they said up, up, left, down, select, start. <laughs> okay, well then let me ask you this. <laughs> would you rather have, this is silly. Would, but then let me ask this, would you all rather have Biden with dementia or Trump with all of his issues? They two wings on the same bird. That's I disagree. How I feel. I disagree. Well, if the bird is America, and sure. I, and I don't know both why both presidents. And I don't know why y'all sleeping on Trump like Trump can't win because y'all know that Republicans gonna get behind he could, whoever. Or even is worse, the candidate. DeSantis. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't think that any of us are sleeping on anybody. I think the reality of it is, I we engage a lot in saying, "Oh, it's just as bad." People did this to Hillary Clinton when she was running in 2016. Yeah. It was, oh, mm-hmm. could, you know, could the lesser two evils. Could y'all be honest for a second. Y'all don't want Biden to run again. Y'all would much rather have somebody. Who, who would you like to see? Run? I don't know, but I know y'all don't want. I, Biden I really want to see what the what the slate is. Like yeah. I don't know what we're talking exactly. about. Yeah. We keep having this imaginary a, I think it conversation. Needs to be, that's the point. You want to see it? You, you want to see other options? Here's, here's, here's the thing. Biden. Envy, you're talking about you want to see him tested. What's his name? Should have had a mental evaluation before he was President Trump, right? Yeah, like, let, that's the kind of testing that should be done. Mm-hmm. We have to go through a character and fitness test for um, to be lawyers, and they're running. They're, they're they right. have they're they're literally the highest office in the land. No you're testing. Right. So yeah, there should be testing. And the only reason I, I say that over. is is if he doesn't understand what's going on and he's <laughs> asking so many questions, who is running this damn country? Then and there's a whole staff. There's a whole cabinet of people. There's it's a vice a monarchy. I know it's not a monarchy, like, there are but plenty of people are in decision making. And power. I don't think it's fair to. Say Say like he's not aware of what's going on. I'm sure he has his moments. You know, my dad he is 80 years, moments. 80 years old. You got it, but he's the president at all times. He does know what's going on at all times. I don't believe yeah, that. Right. That okay. man didn't know that woman's right. name when he was singing Happy Birthday. Yeah, <laughs> so he talked talk to a ghost, ghost man. man. You know what? Open the phone line. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Talk to the people. Mm-hmm. Let's talk to the people about Biden. That's right. All right. 800-585-1051. Let's talk about President Biden. 2016. Mm-hmm. Do you think he should run again? I think it's a little ambitious. Do you that age, you should enjoy the moment. 2024 is a But long you ain't putting up no other candidate. You ain't got no roster. I did. Ron Ron. Ron Ron who? In the Sanders? Yo, oh, yo. you want Ron DeSantis he, to He wants win? to get jumped today. 800-585-1051. It's a Friday. Let's talk about President Biden. Do you think he should run again? Do you think he should be tested uh, for dementia? Do you think he has dementia? Let's talk about it. Why? Okay, are you talking no. about that should not be this, the call. Yeah, question. this sounds like a, it's a simple conservative question. Fox News outlet segment. It's just a simple question. Do you think he should run again? All right. That's Let's all. talk it's about it. Question. That question is fair. I don't want to get jumped in here. I want to know who here. their candidate is. That's a, be- that's a good question. Like, too. if you don't want him to run, who you putting up? Yeah. Precise. Put up or shut up. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have our special... Uh, Guest host with us this morning, Miss Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross. Welcome. Hey. Thank you, thank you. Two of the machetes. <laughs> yeah, they, they about to jump Charlemagne in a second. Now, we were talking. You know up. they got a gang. He we do gang? not have it's a, a gang. gang. They got a gang called the machetes. They got a gang. It's not really? a they gang. They're going to get a Rico. It's, <laughs> get a Rico. You cut it out. With that defamatory it's mess. It's sisterhood. Envy is a sisterhood. Okay. Yeah. So, we're talking true. President Joe Biden. And we're asking people, should he run again? Because he, Tiffany just told us that he is going to announce he's running again at the State of the Union, right? After State of the Union on February 7th. That's okay. that's the political rumor mill. And we're asking 800-585-1051. Should he run again? Let's start in the room. Miss Tiffany Cross. 
Uh, I would say yes because I don't know who else could run in his place at this point. Don't you think that's bad though? Like the fact it's twenty, yeah, it'll be twenty twenty four, and the Democrats have. Because you're not bitch. saying yes because you Sucks. like him. You're saying because well, we ain't got nobody else, so well, we just can it, pick. Well, him. in fairness, Joe Biden did get a lot done um, during his the course of his administration. Oh, what did he get done? Tell us. I, I mean, the it's only COVID, been two years. COVID funding. I think that helped save people yeah. and keep people employed. I think mm-hmm. that's a huge deal. Um, I think you know the infrastructure. Uh, uh, Biff, uh, the bipartisan. Yeah. Um, uh, Biff, infrastructure. Biff from Simpson. <laughs> No. Well, shut the up, bipartisan man. What's wrong with infrastructure you? bill. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a pretty important piece um, of legislation, and it's you know it's important to remember that Biden is not um, you know he's the president of the United States, so there are policies that are the local government is responsible for, the state government is responsible for, and the federal government is responsible for. So I think a lot of times people don't know the difference between the three. From a federal perspective, I think he's done a lot for the people, and we have to inform people what that is instead of. Adopting Fox News talking points, mm-hmm. saying that he's old and has well, dementia. and they have to. He I, is think, old. I think I don't I know think, about the dementia part. Is, but he is old. Yeah, I, but definitely should play with dementia. Like really, like my grandmother passed from that, so I mm-hmm. know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. I don't see that. Um, I do see him forgetting sometimes. I forget too. You taking ginkgo right now? Mm-hmm. Like it is what it is. All presidents, but but, but yeah, I mean everybody, every human does. But Charlamagne I may not even remember y'all talked about the bank. Um, correct. How about that? But I will say, you know, I think it's really important that the administration does a better job communicating their wins it, it like there's been a lot of talk about the child tax credit there's not been um, a lot of talk about many of the other things there's a lot of work still to be done on voting rights on voter suppression related issues in state sure but we know that that's going to impact them federally when it is time to announce and run in 2024 the one thing that i'm very proud of especially this week is the number of black judges that this administration has appointed because my girl kendra davis briggs was just sworn in this week after being stuck in the Senate process for forever. So that's one of the things that means that a lot. Matters. He's appointed more black judges than even Barack Obama did. Mm. And I think that's something that's worth And Trump, ha- Trump appointed nearly 300 judges to the federal bench, mostly white men, um, very few females. And most of these people were un- or underqualified, and these are lifetime appointments. And we don't yeah. prioritize, honestly, um, the judicial branch the same way Republicans do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that, that matters. Yeah, I, I think matters. one of the, the biggest problems is that the things that they campaign on, those are the things that people go out there and vote for, right? Sure. And mm-hmm. None sure. of those things get accomplished. So those things you're talking about, yes, I'm sure he probably has done a whole lot of other things, but those aren't the things that they put up on the well, marquee when they were running. Well, no, here's one George thing. George Floyd Police Act, John back. Lewis Voting Rights Act. No, no, no but they didn't, he didn't actually campaign on George Floyd um, Police Act. Oh, yes, they we did. Were tr- no, Kamala helped to co-author that bill in the Senate. They never, I remember pushing the Biden campaign campaign on this they would not sign off on George Floyd he was very very timid around that on police reform yes on criminal justice reform yes but he would not sign off on George Floyd I will say the other thing is we wrote a letter um, an open letter to Joe Biden demanding three things when he was running it was a black woman Supreme Court justice I give you Katanji Brown Jackson Mm -hmm. we demanded a, a black woman vice president Kamala Harris and we also demanded a black agenda the challenge we have is we've yet to present a cohesive black agenda I think with the work of Black Futures Lab and what's been done with Black Sister, the Black Sisters Louisiana Project. Garza. Now that Back to the Future Fund will do a Black Agenda, hopefully all orgs, all of us can sign on to that and challenge the administration. I think all that stuff is great, but a lot of it sounds like symbolism. See, like, I, I, see, I, I, I disagree. I, I disagree. It, to me, it sounds like and it looks like he has early signs of dementia, right? And that's just to me. And I'm going to tell you why I feel that <laughs> way. I'm going to tell you why I feel that way. I'm going to tell you why mm. I feel that way. If you look at him, some of the things that he says, he doesn't speak correctly. He forgets what he's saying all the time. He looks he confused when he's walking problem. walking around. He doesn't like Charlemagne goes that he was Charlemagne jokes that he was talking to a ghost, but he really was. Like he was really shaking How do you nobody's know he really hand. Talk to a ghost? <laughs> Did you talk to the ghost? <laughs> Did the ghost tell you he was there? With I didn't talk body? to the ghost. But my fear is because you said you said a family member had dementia. My, my mother in law died last year from dementia. Yeah. So we ra- we we helped her when she had dementia like we raised yeah. and we did everything that we supposed to do but you know that it goes from slow to right away it can turn Rapid, immediately yeah. and my whole fear is if it does turn immediately do we want him being the face of America and being out there I, I, and being confused Reagan and doing all this it. other stuff you <laughs> know what I mean and, and I just want to say if it's not that's great but I just think that we should make sure that we understand and know if he has it or doesn't I don't even know about the dementia piece I just know that I cannot look uh, you know black people in the eyes again in 2024 and say that this person is the person that you should vote for because there's a lot of things that were promised to black people in 2020 that black people them? haven't seen. If I don't know. 
I, I, to be I, honest I, with you, that's why I say a lot of times I'm just gonna keep things to myself and let people make their own decisions because we always go out here, put ourselves on the line for these people, say to vote for these people, and they don't do the things that they promised. Can promise I hear somebody to you want to see run? Is, is no, Biden? I don't know. I don't. Is, I don't know. Hunter, I want to see Hunter. Well, let's, let's go. I want to see City Boy. Hunter I need to run, fact man. check you real quick though. He does have to get a physical every year, and the physical results are released. If he had dementia. They would have to tell us. I don't care about none of that stuff. Like, I, I, I care about, I, 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 do. I care about the legislation that they promised us. That's why I, 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 I do. No, I, I, I do. I, I do care about that because if he does have dementia early signs, that's a problem. And if he doesn't, dementia. then I'm, I'm good. But I just want to make sure he's tested and that he, that's understood. He has yeah. to do an annual physical. You said he does have dementia? I no, said he, he does doesn't. not oh, have not. dementia. Oh, he has to do an annual physical. But do they check that in an annual physical? They don't check if I have dementia in an annual physical. Absolutely. They're going to check his motor functions and all of that to the point. I know their motor functions slow. Yo, shut he up. definitely need WD forty. Yo, car, shut up! You gotta warm that car up before you drive, drive this in the morning. So Jackie, good morning. For no reason. So Hi, good morning. Jackie, good morning. Jackie, 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 Jackie. What's your what's your what's your thoughts, Jackie? Um, I think that I my concern would be his age, but with respect to anything you do, it can't discount you. It can't discredit you. Give me a better alternative, right? We like to yeah. throw our weight behind people that don't matter. Everyone has their points of view. People would like independence to run and win. But when's the last time that successfully happened? It hasn't. That's true. I agree with you, Jackie, but I'll tell you, you something, man. We are in a sad place in this country yeah. when there's no alternative. When the when when the, when the best we got is an 80-something-year-old man and people are, are well, saying age we're voting for him. We keep saying, like, age is bad. Age is not bad. No, it's not the age thing. It's just, it's, it's just the... It's like how you're... I understand yeah. that. I think... You know what I will say? To give you a little bit of a silver lining, we were talking about him a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, the newly elected governor in Maryland, Wes Moore, I think very soon, not quite for 2024, but very soon he's going to be a good alternative. Yeah. Wes Moore is ambitious. solid. Yeah. Well, we have but a not democracy. just ambitious, by the time he's solid. He's good. Will we have a democracy by the time we're right. ready? Well, that, honestly, that is a question. And let me let me just say, Charlemagne, too, I don't know that it's, he's our best option. The political infrastructure is rooted in such white supremacy that this is the option they deliver. I mean, you recall that That's the first true. people to choose the president was New Hampshire and Iowa. These are two states with a population that is less than 4% black. It is not in, uh, consistent with the rising majority of America. And we have to get used to, uh, as black and brown folks in this country, oftentimes we don't have the benefit or the luxury of voting our passion or mm -hmm. our policy points. Yeah. We have to wait and see what the white folks going to do to make sure we don't waste our vote because it's right. all too uh, important. And now that they're trying to change that, that South Carolina South might Carolina. be. Yeah, it's your home state. Yeah, so, right. so it may change. Well, let's take some more calls. 800-585-1051. Uh, should Joe Biden run again? That's the question. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it, man. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. Call me. And your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're here with our guest hosts, Miss Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross. And we're taking your calls. We're asking, should Joe Biden run again as president? Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? It's Adeladia. Adeladia, Adeladia. good morning. Adeladia. Boy, that's a name. You got a name on you. Good morning, good morning. Yep, at a lady, a Cuban baby. Very pretty. So, what do you think, Mama? Hello, at a lady. You forgetting like Joe Biden you right now? Up. now. You forgot the question. Yeah, we hear you. What do you think? Okay, so y'all want to talk about the Biden? Yeah, yeah, we would Not like to. The Biden. Hunter or Joe? Which one? <laughs> Stop it, man. All right, I got something to say about Biden. I think Biden is a creep. You know, he ain't really doing shit for us. And he, with his Biden $15,000, you still have to have the credit to get that loan. So he ain't really doing for us. And for Donald Trump, I'd rather have Donald Trump because he was very blunt. He was very upfront. You know, he didn't care what he said on TV. And that's national TV. Well, Adelaide, are is, you a is, No, no, no. Yeah, she's a Trump supporter. She just said she did. Do you live in Long Island? Or, or is George Santos your congressman? No, I live... I'm, Fort Myers. Oh, Florida, Florida, baby. Oh, Florida. Okay. Florida, 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 yeah, Florida Cuban. Florida. A lady. Gotcha. Mm. Well, thank you, mama. The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Just want to throw that out there. Hello, who's this? I was convinced she lived in George Santos. This Hi, um, my name's Ariel. How are you? Ariel, good morning. We're talking about Joe Biden. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't think he should run again. And though I don't know who's running in his replacement, um, I'm 31. And I would like to see someone younger in there. I'm tired of the old farts in there. 
Um, we need people who are more relatable, especially relatable to people of color. Yeah, and I, 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 don't think you, yeah. Yeah. I don't think those established politicians like Biden can be moved as much as y'all feel like they can. Oh, no, I, don't think, I don't think they can be moved at all. They're stuck in Not the much. Worst. I yeah. agree with that. Hello, who's this? Well, there's Noel speaking. Noel, good morning. We're talking Joe Biden. Do you think he should run again? No way. Not Why? at all. Why? I mean, every I think everybody can see it, all the competency, you know, he's not even aware of what's going on. Just like you guys said, you know, the people are the people are watching what's going on. What do you think he's not aware of? What day it is? He's incoherent when he speaks. Charlemagne said it, you know, everybody knows what's going on with him. Um oh, it's yeah. it's a joke. I, I mean to even really entertain the idea. You know, it makes no sense at all. I mean, I could understand, you know, you guys are supporters, but... We're supporters of democracy. I mean, and we're supporters of our survival. We're supporters of not seeing another January 6th. Who do right. you think should run? Oh, he's, he's gone. Oh, oh. sorry. Hello, nice who's this? My name is V. Hey, V, good morning. We're talking Joe Biden. We're asking, do you think he should run again? Um, and sorry, um, DJ and My name is B. B, like Bumblebee, E-A. Oh, B, oh, I'm B. sorry, B. Okay. All right. I apologize. It's okay. Happy Friday. It's okay. Happy Friday to y'all. Do you think we uh, Biden should run again? Bumblebee? I, I think that for the mental health of himself and uh, the people in the United States, I think it's correct he doesn't. He seems to be very forgetful, and that causes a lot of stress and anxiety as he is the one that represents the nation to the world. I think we need him to be 100% there when making life or death decisions. Okay. B, let me ask you if, you, if you're still there. If he did run again, would you vote for him? Oh, depends. Depends who runs. Depends I mean, the, al the alternative is the Republican candidate. So would you rather have Biden or would you rather have the Republican candidate? That could be Trump, that could be DeSantis, or someone of that ilk. Mm. Okay. Um, and she got the point. The that, that's not think about it. Like it's a slam dunk. It is not a slam nobody, dunk. Nobody, nobody, said, that. nobody said that. Not nobody at said that. Not at all. Said that. Not at all. But the fact that. that she is considering voting for a DeSantis that's over a, Biden. That's the Democrats' fault. Problem. No, I think that's the Democrats' fault because the Democrats haven't done a good enough job of a telling people what they are doing that's for regular fair. everyday that people. Fair. And I'm B, not disagreeing they're just a trash ass party. So being a dead trash ass party and people feel like they're not doing nothing for them, they are looking and seeking other options. All right. Shout out to our good friend Jamie. Amy Harrison from South Carolina that is the chair of the Democratic National Committee right now. What I mean? What is Jamie doing? Jamie's doing a lot. Jamie right, invested a, a lot of money in great documentary called In the Bubble that I'm executive producer right. too, by the way. That, that, yeah, right, why you trash right. but, but I also want to say we have to have another talking point other than who else should run. I think that's because, important. Because, because, yeah. you got to give people an alternative. Yeah, you can't have an right. imaginary... Yeah. Because all you're telling the American people is take it or leave it. And no, that, no, you, no, you no. ain't gonna never get me to that's, come out and vote just by saying. That's not what I'm saying. I think that we have to be grounded in reality. The reality is, this is who they're putting up. It's mm -hmm. either likely Trump or DeSantis. If the incumbent runs traditionally, we support the incumbent. They can be primary. If we're primarying him, who's running against him? All we right, have to all have right, somebody. All right. Sorry. All right. Now, when we come back, of course, uh, we have rumors on the way in a little bit. We're going to be talking about Carisha and Trina. Now we're going to talk about some real heavy hitting topics. <laughs> but right? when we now we're going to talk about the things that matter. But when we come <laughs> back, <laughs> we got a special guest checking in, Eli Manning. Man, nobody want to talk to Eli. <laughs> yes, Why Eli Manning will be checking in. To to the Eli playoffs Manning. are this week, and he's talking to, to talk about the damn Giants Man. and how the Giants going to bust the Eagles when we come back. <laughs> it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our guest host joining us uh, today. Tiffany Cross and Miss Angela Rye. And we got a special guest on the phone lines right now. Two time Super Bowl champion, ex New York Giant quarterback, ladies and gentlemen, Eli Manning. Hey, how you doing? You know me. We've done podcasts. Yes. You know I'm a Giants fan. And then you know my co host, and you know he's a cowgirl fan. Don't, don't, don't misgender my team. <laughs> Go Cowboys! <laughs> no, no, no. So what I what I wanted have to, that. what I wanted to discuss with you is is some some quick football. Of course, the Giants are playing this Saturday. What do you think the Giants need to do to win this game on Saturday? You know, I think they just need to play the way they've been playing the last few weeks, and that's uh, protecting the football, running the ball well. Daniel's been playing great, control passing game, and um, you know, just step up in the critical moments of the game. And so, you know, I think that's uh, that's the defense got a big stop last week and. In a two-minute drill, so you know I think for the Giants, they want to get it to the fourth quarter, keep it a close game, and find a way to win it in the fourth quarter. 
You know, I wanted to ask you too, Eli, man. How many middle fingers are you expecting uh, this week to receive in yeah. Philadelphia? Philadelphia's got to be yeah, the worst. I don't know what the crowd. over-under is. Um, <laughs> on Shovel Bird. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out what that is. I don't know if it's like a thousand, if it's 500. I don't, I, I don't, I don't you, know. It'll be interesting. You once said you'd never go to Philly again because of how they treated you. I know. I know. I thought I never would. And so uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm bringing my 11 year old daughter with me. I, I, I got to, you know, she's going to learn a little new vocabulary, I feel. And I just think, hey, I've already told her, like, whatever you hear or see in Philadelphia stays in Philadelphia. You don't bring that home. You don't bring that to school. You don't even tell mom about it. Like, you know, you just kind of, like, listen. You'll hear some things. And just, you know, you got to forget about it once once we leave. And I got to ask you some predictions before you get off the phone. Jaguars, Chiefs, who who you think got that one? Well, I think everybody's probably going to take the Chiefs just because it's, you know, Patrick Mahomes and their record and what they've been able to do. Um, you know, the Jaguars, it's like one of those teams you don't want to let them linger too long. You saw what they did last week. You saw what they did versus the Cowboys late in the year. If you, if you kind of keep them around, all of a sudden they got this ability to make these comebacks and stay in the game. So I think the Chiefs, you know, um, obviously they want to go out and score every time and, and you want to get a big lead. But I think it's important to, to try to jump and get a lead on these guys because they have that ability just to, to, to rally towards the end. Bengals, Bills, who do you got? You know, this this is a fun one. Um, I think this is, you know, might be the, the best game of the weekend just because both these teams are so good. Both quarterbacks are playing at, at such a high level. It's it's tough. I, you know, the Bills, I kind of, for, for my AFC team earlier in the year, I said the Bills were the team to beat, and, and I, still, I still feel that way. I think they just, uh, they find ways to win. Um, Josh Allen can look, you know, unbelievable at times and unstoppable. Every once in a while, he, he goes through a few series where he gets a little reckless, but he's still he's able to dial it back in. So I still like the Bills. Cowboys and 49ers. Who do you have? Don't be disrespectful, Eli. <laughs> Not disrespectful. Both teams. I mean, obviously, Dak. Dak played outstanding last week, and that was uh, that was fun. That was fun to see and see him. I was happy for him to to win that playoff game and and to play so well. A lot of pressure was on him, but. You know, there's going to be a different type of pressure on them this this week because it's the uh, it's the 49ers defense is going to be, be be the ones giving pressure on them. It's not an internal pressure, it's not a mental pressure. It's a physical pass rush pressure that's going to be on them. I, I just think the 49ers defense is is too good, and and their offense, you know, they just got too many playmakers, and, and guys are are playing are, are playing hungry, and and it's scary right now. I think they're 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 playing the best football of maybe any team in the NFL right now. And of course, so are you saying that they're going to beat us? Yes, yeah, that's, that's what, what you're saying. Like. saying the Cowboys are going to lose this weekend. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just want you to kind of read the language and just yeah. see if you could comprehend what I was saying yeah. and, and kind of uh, if you could get your, the conclusion yourself. You've been wrong before. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, of course, the Giants. What do you think the score is going to be on that game this weekend? Um, I think it's going to be a tight game, and I think it's it's going to be twenty four twenty one Giants. All right. I'm with you, Eli. Well, hold on. I got one more question. You know, I enjoy the Man and Cast TV program, Eli. I really do with you and your brother Peyton. And, and this is just a, a random football question because you are, you know, quarterback. I think you should be a first ballot Hall of Famer, so you Absolutely. would understand this. Legend. I just want to know, what is it about football that's keeping Tom Brady around? Is football really that <laughs> fun to play, to be around as long as he's been around? And he's 46 next year. You know, I think it's just one of those things. You, you, you've been doing it so long; it's just become part of your routine. And, and you, I think that could be a hard thing to say. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop doing these workouts, and I'm gonna stop just preparing right now for this upcoming season. And I mean, it's just become your life, and it, it can be scary to give that up. It's like, well, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do to f- fulfill that competitiveness that I have? And you know, it's not just games. It's practice it's the preparation it's the off season just you know always working towards something and and i think you got to have a game plan to to, to uh, you know attack that and to fulfill that and so and, until he you know kind of knows what that is i think he don't want to give up what he knows makes him happy all right Man, well basically you just said tom brady don't have a life outside of football <laughs> <laughs> you just said. well there you have it two-time super bowl champion eli manning we appreciate you for joining us and uh Let's go, Big Blue. Let's go, Giants. Let's go, Big Blue. Let's do it. 
right, thank you, Eli, for checking in. When we come back, we got the rumor report. We got to talk. Carisha, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ I swear we just played Lil Uzi 20 minutes ago. That wasn't 20. It was like last hour. Who that, Mbaku? Is that Mbaku on the song? Who? 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 You sound like a Jabari tribe doing the ad libs on this Uzi. What's wrong with you, man? I'm telling you. He's been been wrong in off since yesterday. (laughs) That would be hard. Well, our guest host today, Miss Angela Ryan, Tiffany Cross, are joining us. And let's get to the rumors. Let's talk uh, Carisha. Rumor has it. Rumor rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes, on The Breakfast Club. All right, a lot to talk about, a lot to digest. Now, let, Carisha. Let the record show, I watched this interview in real time. I yesterday. bet you did. I watched it live from there. I was one of the 50,000 people watching this live. You hear me? Now, Carisha interviewed Trina on Carisha Please podcast. And there's so much to talk about. Where do you want to start? I enjoyed it. I mean, where do you, I mean it's a lot there. Where, well, where, where are you thinking to start? Well, let's start with. Don't start with the P. Everybody talking about the P. I wasn't going to talk about the P. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, Trina. Uh, Carisha talking to Trina about allegedly dating Missy Elliott. <laughs> is it true that you dated Missy Elliott? Oh, no. Missy, I love Missy, but no, I should have. She's so bossed up with the bag. <laughs> like what? But no, I did. I hit it a lot. A lot of people always ask it, but I didn't. I really never dated Missy. Like Missy is just like a great person. She was a big inspiration to me. Uh-huh. Um, that was the first person I really learned a lot of from, uh-huh. for real. And not, and I mean, like what Missy taught me was more so about like making sure all your was together mm-hmm. making sure your money was good like she's a different kind of person when it comes to like what she knows in the industry it just it, i grew a lot just from that always be in a room with somebody that got more than you yes that's how you that's excel right. that's how you learn that's how you stay into this game mm-hmm. if you're the biggest person in the room you got to get in another room because mm-hmm. that means you have excelled where you are at right now and you know how i know trina was being honest with that uh answer because they were about 17 shots in by the time she answered that question. Mm. I was highly impressed by the amount of alcohol both of them were able to consume mm. and still have a functional conversation. Now she also talks about her relationship with Lil Wayne and French Montana. Smoke time. Lil Wayne or French Montana? Lil Wayne. Why? Totally two different people, two different artists, two different totals, whatever. I was engaged to Wayne in a whole real relationship with Wayne. That's a whole different phase. Uh-huh. Like, and me and French, we were friends, so that's a whole different situation. And Wayne and I had a total different relationship. Totally different. Ex-Lil Wayne, who the five-star is? <laughs> <laughs> we had just a different relationship. Like, Wayne is just a great person. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just a real, a real, real great person. We had no issues. He wasn't, it wasn't, a, oh, he's a cheat. It was never nothing like that. We was just young. Mm-hmm. I was young. He was younger. And it was just one of the things, like, that was just a lot. It was legendary. It was a lot, it though. Was legendary. <laughs> it was legendary. Yeah. Tiffany Cross, Lil Wayne in French Montana. <laughs> Uh, what's option C? Just like Biden. We don't know. We don't <laughs> know who it, man. Biden. Said, Where's my slate? Exactly. Where's my slate? Jesus. Uh, but, you know, I want to talk about what she said about Missy because mm-hmm. I do think that's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when women come together and support each other, mm-hmm. right. you know, and it would have been easy for Missy to feel like, you know, we're both, uh, you know, hip hop artists in the music industry and you're my competitor. But instead, she understood there was strength that's right. um, in having a sisterhood. And my advice to women is always share information, share opportunities, um, help uplift each other, support each other. Because when you look look to your left and your right, you want to make sure that everybody around you is doing something dope and then the dopest position. Because you never know when you need that person to hire you for something Mm -hmm. or to catch you from a fall. Um, So I really like the thing about her and Missy. And it's sad that it's always like, oh, they close where they dating. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, no, they were just... A sisterhood, like the machetes, which is not a gang, by the way. Oh, Lord. All right. Now, she, they also talk about uh, her having children and why she hasn't had a baby as of yet. Why <laughs> Trina don't have kids? Mm. Did you never not want kids, can't have kids, or you never felt like a man would, like, work through all your kids? Like, Well, after three miscarriages, mm-hmm. I would have had three kids. Mm-hmm. That was a lot for me. Yeah. I mean, the first one was... I don't think I really understood it too much. I was younger, younger. But then once I got older, and then that was the next one, I was just like, okay, what does that mean? Then it just became a point to like third miscarriage. I was like, okay. Yeah. And it was like, what's the problem? Mm-hmm. Like, and then when my mom got sick, honestly, I just went into this phase of, I don't even want to have a kid and my mom is not here. Like, yeah. how do I raise a kid without my mom? Without a grandma. That's not the happiest thing for yeah. me, honestly. Yeah. Even to this day, so I'm thinking about maybe I got like two years left to have a kid, maybe. In my in, in my frame to me, I feel like I'll give myself two years to have a kid. You know, when women have those conversations, now I feel like I'm eavesdropping. That, that's when I feel like it's too much information. Like, I don't want to. I, I don't personally need right. to know that. I respect the conversation, but it's like 
That's your business. Yeah. I you love that mean? she had that conversation. Mm-hmm. And I think especially as someone who I froze my eggs really late. Um, and now in this stage of my life, really trying to go through the process of getting my body right so that I can have children. Um, I, really, I really respect that. And when you think about all of the things that black women in particular go through from a maternal health standpoint, Another shout out to Kamala and uh, Kamala Harris for everything she did on black maternal health. We need to be having these conversations mm-hmm. and making them more pedestrian and accessible so people are safe in the birthing process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think what Charlamagne said, sometimes, you know, brothers, we got to mind our business. because there's, right. there's reasons that we, we just don't know. And it's none of our business. No, I remember I, I asked somebody that one time on the air and I felt so bad. Asking no, that. we didn't play it. We didn't play it. it. We erased it. Was it was behind the scenes. Yeah. It was behind the scenes that we didn't air it. Yeah, thank God. You, you sounded stupid. I did. Wow. Mm-hmm. I did. No, he did. Sound, I did. No, nah, it was a long time ago. It was stupid. It, it was long. It was, it was over. It was evolved, ago. but yeah, it was stupid. But anyway, very dumb. that is your rumor report. <laughs> and the person said, why you ain't having kids? <laughs> why you don't have kids? Can you have them out your butt? <laughs> Can you have them out your butt? <laughs> oh, Lord. We'll tell you who was behind the scene. We'll tell you who was behind the scene. It's not funny, man. No, that was funny. It was. Who are you giving your donkey to? Speaking man, of butts. four after what? Donkey, but okay. Man, shut up. Four after the hour, uh, we need Brian Walsh to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with him, please. All right, we'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday with DraftKings Sportsbook same game parlays? You can pocket more cash when you combine multiple bets from one game. Download the app. Sign up with code Envy. That's E N V Y. And get a special offer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Oh man. This place is crazy. I'ma fatten all that shit around your eyes. They want this man to throw them blows, man. They wait for Charlemagne to tap these gloves. Let's go. They had to make a judgment of who was going to be on the donkey of the day. They chose you. Yes. It's a breakfast club, bitches. Who's donkey of the day today? Well, donkey of the day from Friday, January 20th goes to a 47-year-old Massachusetts man named Brian Walsh. Now, if you don't know who Brian Walsh is, he's the husband of a Massachusetts woman who disappeared around New Year's Day. That young lady's name was Anna Walsh. Do you want to know why that young lady disappeared she disappeared because brian walsh killed her i still gotta say allegedly uh didn't just kill her allegedly but dismembered and discarded her her remains yes he's accused of assaulting and beating his wife with the intent to murder and he's charged with removing her body and remains he pleaded not guilty to the charges now i understand the legal system and every single person uh you know Every single person on the planet has, has this theory. Uh, you know, we got to have due process, right? Everybody deserves due process. But sometimes, just sometimes, we don't need to waste taxpayers' dollars with court cases and stuff because every now and then, like in a case like this one, we don't got to do all the pomp and circumstance. Whatever they say Brian did, he did it. Okay, so you can learn a lot from a person's internet browser history. For example, on December 27th, Brian made an internet search for what's the best state to divorce for a man? Clearly, if his wife saw that, she would be upset because it's obvious Brian was searching uh, for how to get a divorce, okay? Unless, of course, he was searching for a friend who didn't have Wi-Fi. That would be the lie one would tell if their wife ever caught them searching anything about divorcing. But that's not all Brian was searching. The other things Brian was searching is the reason he's going to be found guilty on all counts of everything he's charged with guaranteed. Well, what else was he searching for, Uncle Charlotte? Let's go to CBS Boston for the report, please. Brian Walsh told police he hadn't seen or spoken to his wife, Anna, since the early morning hours of New Year's Day. Investigators now believe that's exactly when he killed her, then used his son's iPad to research online how to get away with it. Early searches around 5 a.m. included how long before a body starts to smell, how to stop a body from decomposing, can you throw away body parts, can baking soda, mask, or make a body smell good, how long can someone be missing before inheritance. Anna Walsh's body has not been found. Prosecutors say Brian Walsh was seen heaving trash bags into dumpsters that have already been incinerated. The state crime lab detected DNA from both Brian and Anna in those bloody trash bags that were Mm. recovered. Police found blood in Brian's car and tracked the husband's errands, buying cleanup supplies and new rugs. Mm. 
Mm -mm -mm. I don't claim to be the highest grade of weed in the dispensary, but if there is indeed a human who has been murdered and dismembered and the number one suspect in this murder has a search history that consists of 10 ways to dispose of a dead body if you really need to. By the way, when would you not need to? Don't we always dispose of dead bodies? Nobody just leaves dead bodies lying around the house, do they? And how to stop a body from decomposing? If the number one suspect in a murder case is looking up all this stuff, this stuff, I think it's safe to say he's guilty. Okay, not to mention investigators found the couple's DNA along with a COVID vaccination card for Anna and a hacksaw and cutting shears and a hatchet and a trash bag, you know, that that that, that was disposed of in the dumpster near Brian's mother's house. This is an open and shut case, all right? Open and shut case. The couple's DNA was identified on the slippers and a suit that they found in trash bags. They found blood in the basement, a damaged knife with blood on it. The saddest part about this whole situation is that Anna Walsh's body has not been found, which means that majority of the stuff he searched on Google clearly worked. So I ask a question. Shouldn't Google... Uh, be held as an accomplice or whoever is creating these pages where people can have this kind of information that is causing people to potentially get away with crimes. You don't you think? No. You don't no. think so? That I mean, that opens up a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're you're getting into dangerous territory there. Um, similar to the the Rico cases. You know, when you start mm -hmm. taking people's rap lyrics, and it's like if I'm searching something, you don't know why I'm searching something. Maybe I'm, you know, as a journalist, I search for a lot of things mm -hmm. um, just to get information. Things that you search for. I mean, imagine if somebody could go through your entire search history mm -hmm. and then not only hold you accountable for that, but hold the search engine itself accountable for mm -hmm. that. I, I I think that's a dangerous territory. But should you be allowed to tell people how to put Potentially get away with and I was Tiffany Cross speaking, by the way. Should you be allowed to tell people to what? tell people how to potentially get away with crimes? I see why you, you say that's dangerous. Like that's understandable. So maybe we could, we should be looking at just the same thing that happens when um someone goes on a mass shooting spree mm -hmm. and now they're more the media is much more diligent about mm -hmm. reporting about it, how they're reporting about it, so it doesn't encourage a copycat. Mm -hmm. I hear your point, but I think we do have to be careful about a slippery slope. Word. Well, uh, Please give Brian Walsh. Let, let Remy Ma give Brian Walsh the biggest hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee-haw. You stupid mother Are you dumb? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do it. Now it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's, it's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday. Yes. Hey. Now, Freaky, Freaky Friday question. Let's talk sex toys. Are we going to do the sex toys? You're not going to do P, Diddy? Which one you want to do? You want to do P or sex toys? Maybe a combination of both. Because the sex toys, if you do it right, would lead to pee, because that's what they say squirting is. No. Either we're going to pee, wow. or we're going to use sex toys. Which one? <laughs> first of all, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> don't you ever look me in the eyes and ask me that question ever again. I know Gia out of town. <laughs> right? I know Gia out of town, but I told you, I'm not playing gay Which games. Which way are we going? Shooting. Okay. Don't pass it to me. Just kiss me and spit it in my mouth. Whoa. <laughs> That was Whoa. a hell of a time. Whoa. What? Timed Whoa. out. Uh, Where do y'all think trap. we should go? I, you Let's know, talk sex toys. Let's talk right. toys. sex okay. toys. Okay. All, All right. right. Now, Carisha was interviewing Trina, and they discussed sex toys, and this is where it came from. I'm not like the toys. Deal. I'm not the girl that want to have the sex. Yeah. I'm not. I need the real thing. Yeah. I'm not grinding on a, like a toy. But that sh is dangerous. I'm just saying, when you a woman and you... Get addicted to that vibrator thing and that little butterfly, that little cute thing, that, 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 you really almost like not need a man. Yeah. It makes it hard for a man to please you because a man could never go against that little fast. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he could never. That's like two, three seconds you're about to have an orgasm. A man can't even move his tongue that fast. And so when they try to, it's like a bunch of wasted time. You need to know how to massage, lick, and suck. Okay. Okay. All uh, right, you can stop it, right there. Don't, stop. don't stick that in my butt. You can stick your finger or your tongue in it. Ooh, and that's the end of that. Period. Oh, no. You wanted to get to that point. That's all what Dr. Katrina Laverne Taylor is saying is keep it organic. All right, so we're that's asking. That's she's saying. 800-585-1051. The question saying. is, sex toys in the bedroom. Are you into it? Do you enjoy sex other than the real thing, the real meat? She's just saying keep it organic because she's saying that you can get used to those sex toys and then the real thing don't feel, you know, the same to you. It's like a lot of people are used to processed food. So when they go out the country and they eat real, yeah. actual, organic food, they, they get sick and it don't it don't hit right for them. All know? right. We'll talk about it. the processed stuff. We'll talk about it when we come back. We're taking your calls. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's Freaky Friday, goddamn. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody.
everybody, it's DJ NV, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our guest host with us joining us today. We have, of course, Miss Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross. And we're asking... Well, no, man. Let's start it the right way. Yes. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday! And the Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday question is sex toys. All right. And this comes from Dr. Katrina Laverne Taylor, who did an interview with uh, the new Oprah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> let's, let's, Carisha. Yeah. Let's hear I'm not like the toys deal. I'm not the girl that want to have the sex. Yeah. I'm not. I need the real thing. Yeah. I'm not grinding on a, like a toy. But that sh is dangerous. I'm just saying when you a woman and you get addicted to that vibrator thing and that little butterfly, that little cute thing, that, that da, 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 you really almost like not need a man. Yeah. It makes it hard for a man to please you because a man could never go against that little fast. Da, 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 da. He could never. That's like two, three seconds you're about to have an orgasm. A man can't even move his tongue that fast. And so when they try to, it's like a bunch of wasted time. You need to know how to <laughs> massage, lick, and suck, okay? It really takes away the pleasure of getting pleased by a man. I'm not really into the toy thing, the butt. Don't stick that in my butt. You can stick your finger or your tongue in it. <laughs> and that's the end of that. Period. So we're asking, do you use sex toys? Is it better than the real thing? Do you prefer the real thing? That's, that's what we go with. So let's start with you, Charlamagne. No, let's start with uh, Tiffany and Angela Rye. You know, they are here. You know, they are women. I just want, you know, does, does Trina have a point? I can't wait to hear the intellectual, eloquent way y'all explain this. I will say, um, I think Trina has a point. I think the deeper issue is um, we're getting further disconnected from each other. I mean, when you think about um, social media and you don't really see people's real selves, it's their avatars, these heavily filtered photos, people are chasing that. Younger people are not approaching each other in public anymore. It's all a DM or a Snapchat. Um, and so then the most intimate thing we have between us is to connect spiritually and physically through sex. And that's getting eroded. In fact, younger people are having less sex now because of issues like sex toys um, and, and self-pleasure. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But I do think, particularly for our community, there's something to be said about the intimacy that exists between one man and one woman. There's nothing wrong with satisfying yourself and making sure that you have a good time during sex. But I am a little concerned about us getting away from it. Damn it, drop on the clues, Mother Tiffany. Yeah, she turned that into an intellectual <laughs> taste. All right, wow. Miss Rye. So Rock I. This ratchet ass Seattle. She, <laughs> she can't do She's not going to be able to do it. Go. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to try. So I'm going to say this. I um, was afraid of sex toys for a long time because of growing up in the church. Like, I started going to Church of God in Christ um, in high school. They talk about sex they toys in church. Cross? No, no, no. They talk about masturbation. Mm. And masturbation is a sin. And I was like, oh, you know, like you learn about that. And you're like, okay. So I was terrified of vibrators. Can I say a product name on here? Yes, of course. Okay. Because I know they didn't sponsor, but my friend told me about this vibrator from um, this company called Tracy's Dog. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> <"Yes."> yeah. <laughs> and um, I was like, okay, I'm going to see about this. That thing, uh, you know, it does some things. Mm -hmm. It's um, interesting. What's it, it works. called? Tracy's, Tracy's Dog. Oh, it's called Tracy's Dog. Tracy's Dog. This comedian did a whole bit about really? it in his Netflix stand up special. Is it better than The Rose? I don't even I don't know okay. I don't know but what I'll tell you is Tracy's dog is <laughs> man you gotta and shut I up think sometime, when we're man. talking about connecting um, intimately with with our you know our partner whomever mm -hmm. you know it could be think about it like a position like a mm -hmm. sex position you're mm -hmm. just adding in an accessory you're adding in something else I think it, it could work if and you're enjoying it with a man I, or without yeah, yeah. Well, and for people that are holistic they got the crystal they do. They do. <laughs> no, they, they do. Really? They're called wands, but yes, they have. Crystal what are they called wands? wands? Crystal wands. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to the full. You moon. charge them on the full moon, just like you do your other crystal. Yo, shut up. That's Hello, true. who's this? That is true. <laughs> That's true. This is Tara calling from Detroit. Hey, we're talking sex toys this morning. Thoughts? Yes. Yes. My thoughts. Yes. Are yes. It's an we know. Idea. It's what? It's amazing idea. It's an amazing thing to do. It's like a lasting impression. Okay, so you so you enjoy them a little bit. I no, I don't enjoy them a little bit. I love them. <laughs> okay, but do, you, but do you love them more than the real thing? Are you saying you like a combination of both? You like a little organic and GMO no, on your plate? I like I like the combination of both. I can never get rid of the original thing. Never okay. Ever. Okay. Okay. What, you, because what Dr. Katrina was saying is it's dangerous to get addicted to those toys because you won't even want the real thing no more. Hello, who's this? Does that happen? Hey, what's going on, man? All right. Well, you into uh, sex toys, bro? Yeah, a little something, something. Uh, me and the wife. Okay. Just grabbed a Tracy's dog. Wow. Just talked about Angela this. Angela just bought yeah. up that canine. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> Angela Rogers talked about that. Yeah, that's a fact. I, I, I would imagine they knew about it. The beautiful young ladies up there. But um, I suggest everybody <laughs> in any type of relationship, if you're lonely, if you're into whatever, get that. Well, Tracy's they dog stock about, yeah, they right. about to go up because I'm Googling them right now. <laughs> <laughs> what is Tracy's Tracy dog? What does it say? It's a it's a line of toys. It's not just one toy. Oh. It's a website. Tracy's dog. Okay. All right. Well, 800 585 1051. OG vibrator. What? What? They're legit. All right. <laughs> We're talking sex toys this morning. Legit. It's Freaky 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 Friday. We're taking your calls. Uh, do you use sex toys in the bedroom? Does it help? Are you addicted? Let's talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. You hear Charlemagne saying Jesus Christ because he's looking up uh, Tracy's uh, dog. Yo, Tracy's dog's got some wild stuff. They got someone here called the Terminator Thrusting Rotating Masturbator Machine. Oh, that's it's sold out. out. No, that's it's sold out. <laughs> hey, that sounds like that might permanently break your Whoa. lady part. Yes, I don't know about that. that. Sold he out. just tried to order. It's it was sold order. out. Wow. Yeah, well, we have our guest host, Tiffany Cross and Miss Angela Rye here. And we're talking. Well, let's do it the right way. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday. <laughs> and we're talking sex toys this morning. A lot of people are on the line. Hello, who's this? This is Candace. Hey. Who they go, they go. Hey, Ken. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't start, Charlotte. Good morning. <laughs> we're talking sex toys this morning. Talk to us. Okay, so, I mean, I agree with Trina. Uh, you can't get used to those toys. My man and I don't live together, so sometimes I have to resort to that road. And 20, 25 seconds, and I'm done. I don't want to get used to that. I want to enjoy, you know, my man holding me, grabbing me. I want to feel that body heat. So it's okay, but not too much. Okay. Thank you, Mama. Truth be told, I can understand why somebody would want to do the sex toy thing. Because Trina also said in that interview that when a man goes down on her, she needs him down there for two hours. Ain't nobody got time for that. She definitely said two hours. Ain't nobody That's got time crazy. for that. You know? So get you the Terminator thrusting, rotating, masturbating. That machine. would sound. <laughs> Look, let me make sure that I'm clear about my endorsement. I don't know nothing about that one. That would sound scary. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that one. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is What do you think about sex toys, Mama? Uh, well, I agree with Trina. I don't personally own any sex toys. I, I need the real thing. I don't really, I don't have any interest in toys. I don't really, yeah, grown women don't really play with toys, in my opinion. <laughs> I this, disagree. This, this, yeah, boy, I this 43 year old does yeah. right here says, Yeah, grow I, I disagree <laughs> no. with that. I don't know if that's uh, true to uh, I don't play with toys. I need the real thing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I think the toys have to be an accessory. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like it should be yeah. an accessory. Like it's not a replacement. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, right. But what about, it's an accoutrement. But what about if a woman is single and not, doesn't have a boyfriend? It's it's not an accessory at that point. It's it's um, a go-to. placeholder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a placeholder. You know? Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, what's your name? Good morning. Addie calling from New Jersey. Hey, Addie from Jersey. So we're talking sex toys this morning. What's your thoughts? So I agree with Trina. I think that you should just uh, keep the toys out of the bedroom because no man, woman, cat, dog, frog can match that energy. So just use the parts that you were given. And if you can't make it do what it do with those parts, then you're doing it wrong. I I want the record to show that a lot of these toys have settings. So you ain't got to turn it on to the high setting. You can keep it low. You know? But what's the point of that? They have different patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your name, Mama? Shalonda Cummings. Your last name is Cummings. Could you stop? <laughs> <laughs> Could you stop? <laughs> That's a lady. Could you stop? It came up with cool idea. It says Shalonda Cummings. Okay. <laughs> I'm just asking. I just want to be sure. Now, it says you're an adult novelty specialist. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Yes, sir. She sells toys. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, I do. You got the plug on the licky tongue vibrators? <laughs> the what? <laughs> <laughs> they do have those. I want her opinion on Tracy's dogs. Mm-hmm. They're all lying. To talk to oh, us, I'm sorry. To talk to us about sex toys, and she wants your opinion on Tracy's dogs. The uh, I guess the line and the rose and all that. Okay, well I have the rose. The rose is extremely popular with single ladies as well as couples. And in my opinion, you could turn your partner's member into a sex toy. Oh, explain. There are sex toys that can make him vibrate. They're called. Um, I'm not sure if I can say the words on the radio. Yes. Uh, it's called cream. And you have rings that vibrate and those that do not. Ah, mm-hmm. so as the man is having intercourse, his penis will be vibrating. Vibrate, yes, sir. Okay. That is a very popular uh, item. 
Yeah, that don't feel good for men, though. I was going to ask, is that pleasurable for nah, men and women? I've tried it. It don't feel good. It feels it's, weird. Vibration well, see, is it, not it, good It, it depends right. on the man. There are varying degrees of <laughs> ring. Some do vibrate harder and stronger than others. And I'm sure so if you have a small pee pee, it doesn't feel you. good. And I think that's Charlamagne's problem. No, it just felt like my penis was having a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, what about the, the the thing you looked up, the masturbating thingamajiggy? I'm looking at this one now oh, called the, the turbo. turbo. It's called the Turbo, the super automatic male turbo. masturbator. Yes, Turbo. Yeah, it's turbo. Is that something like? Oh, it's got does two. it look like the Don Don Three Thousand? A what? You <laughs> <laughs> said the same exact time. look like a what? There's this there's this sex toy for men called the Gawk Gawk Three Thousand. The and it goes by many names. I, I heard of that one. I heard of the Gawk. Yeah, the Gawk Gawk 3000. Yeah, I heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a very popular one as well. It's for guys. And I feel out of that one quite often. What about the Dr. S. Thrusting Anal Vibrator? <laughs> what? That varies by taste. Not everybody does the back, back door play. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people that are curious and are willing to try. Okay. All right. And well. there are actual anal plugs that you can use. To slowly step you into anal play, they vary by very small, okay. and they can get pretty big. One right. bead at a time. I don't think Thank I want to have it in my anal Thank cavity you. is Thank a colonic. You. I don't want none yeah. of that. Colonics yeah. are great. Yeah, they're, what? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the this a, like a detox. Like yeah, a no, they, they're about to play with my butt on Monday. Especially, no, that's a mm -hmm. that's a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. oh, We're talking about colonoscopy. colonoscopy. I'm, I'm, talking about, but I'm, you, I'm telling you, they're about to play with my butt on Monday. I had a I had a, a colonoscopy uh, in December. I told I'm you. I'm so that. proud of you guys for Good. doing that. Mm -hmm. You want to exactly. live Exactly yeah. sure But there's right. a lot of people Who won't do don't. it So Come that's on. good yeah. The colonics are great though Because after you have the colonic Then you mm -hmm. go sit down And they put your feet up On that thing What's the thing called The squatty the potty What <laughs> and then That's all that what stuff. I was thinking Sir <laughs> oh, you're, getting, potty? you're getting A closed system colonic You're really brave <laughs> He said sir Like you yes. want to Pass they have, me like, You get the boo boo explosion Up your back You don't want that You don't know Open oh, yeah, system No 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 That thing is crazy You know Dr. Oz came up And told him that We don't need colonics I don't agree with Do Dr. Dr. Oz. Oz. I don't agree yeah. with him. We don't. Okay. Him. All right. Well, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story, it sounds like I'm ready for the Dr. S trusting anal vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, boo? Do you, boo? No. Tracy'sDogs.com is the moral of the story. They got some things you on here. We got to They need to pay for advertising. Yeah. Because we really have promoted That's just some stuff up here. That's what they should do. This is or they used to send us up. Somebody used to send us Dr. up. Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson. No, Doc Johnson. Doc Johnson. Yeah, Doc Johnson. <laughs> Dr. Johnson. <laughs> Dr. Johnson. That's a sex right. toy place or something else. Yeah, no, it's what it's called. Oh, it's Doc like, Johnson. All right. When we come back, we got your rumor report. We got to talk TJ Holmes. He's back. Ooh, great He's back. segue. <laughs> that was oh, a great my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. We'll get into that next. I hate y'all. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. y'all here? <laughs> The Breakfast Club. Power 1051. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. All right, let's get right to the rumors. We got a lot to talk about. Let's talk P. Diddy. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, P. Diddy is trending right now. P.E.E. -E Diddy. And that's because of the conversation with Trina and Carisha. It's a take a shot. If you like go to showers, I do. Are you everywhere? You like it? I just like it. You do? <laughs> Freak. <laughs> Freak of the week. Huh? I'm going to be honest. I've never had a golden shower. I've given one. Oh, is that Ooh. the same thing as or Yeah. They, well, they say that. I don't know. But I... I don't have to go to shower and I like it. I'm all about trying new things though. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Like, you know, when you drunk and you just. And they just f all over your body? You just like, you know, f your butt. And then y'all still have sex after? <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends. Like, you can f me in the shower. You can f me like once you c me. Like, it just depends. Let the record show they were 37 shots in by that point. <laughs> what, 37 shots in. Yes. Your thoughts? <laughs> um. If, if this young lady genuinely likes golden showers, mm -hmm. that's one thing. I think. One thing, uh, an issue that I see among younger women in particular is in rap lyrics and their conversation, everything is about pleasing a man. Doing something mm. that appeals to a man mm -hmm. visually or doing something that sexually pleases a man 
And I wish that conversation could flip, you know, like, what is this man doing to please you? Because that seems like a very degrading thing. I'm and sure women is, pee on uh, Perhaps, but if, on if, 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 if this 20 something is talking about P. Diddy, and we don't know if she is or no, not. No, no, she didn't say P. Diddy. P. Diddy's just trending because people are assuming. Yeah, why do you better assume get off my I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like, like it. that. I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't even like the visual. Uh, of that, it does seem degrading. <laughs> hey, it seems man. degrading. It's all that. fun and games until said man eats asparagus. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if you for it after that man just ate some no. asparagus. Goodness Yuck. gracious! Okay, Ew. and our guest hosts, of course, is uh, Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross. Now we got to talk T.J. Holmes. T.J. Holmes allegedly had sex with his uh, 24-year-old intern in his office. Uh, his, in his office, excuse me. Now this comes from the DailyMail.com. We're not going to say the woman's name. Thank you. Um, but they're saying that he was a predator who took full advantage of his position and he was reckless. Now, the informant went on to allege that the first time the pair's relationship got sexual was in his office only a couple of hours before he was set to go on air. And uh, we just don't think it's right that they found this up and dug it up and put that lady's uh, information out there. So we won't say her name. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if any of that is true, but I just don't understand. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Yeah, I don't understand why brothers just keep tricking themselves out of position for poom poom. Like, you know who you are. You know what I mean? And you know who you are in that building. So why would you ever put yourself in a position to lose your job over a woman? Yeah. Over sex? Right. Like, you can't office. control yourself? Well, yeah. if it's true, you discipline. this you know was some time ago. And I think that if we look, there are numerous examples that uh, rose out of the, the Me Too mo uh, movement mm -hmm. where people were using their positions of power to do all kinds of things. I remember hearing stories about, oh, when you start doing more business in L.A. and entertainment... Guys will try you. They absolutely do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to do a show with you. By the way, can we go on a date? Like, yeah. that's it's really a thing. And so I think that when um, people are pursued and they're like, oh, this is a, someone I can mentor and they're attractive, they need to learn how to control themselves. Because clearly, um, it's it's a, a rampant problem. It was something that if it happened, he thought he could get away with. And if it happened, he did until now. And we know this story is not out because it's the right thing to do. They're demonizing TJ. Right. Because yeah. I was going to say, there are people on air today, right, right now, now, as a matter of fact. Right now. Who, he was married, she was married, and there was something, and the network turned it into a love story. Mm -hmm. And some might call that a Me Too marriage. So I'm not necessarily saying TJ deserves all the heat coming this way. I just think that if there's going to be a precedent, it should be equal across the board. Oh, you know they ain't going to dig up nothing on that white woman. You ain't going to hear nothing about, about who she used to sleep with or who she messed with in that building. Nah, we haven't yeah. heard anything. And lastly, I just want to talk about, uh, shout to everybody in Houston in H-Town, a young lady named Sydney uh, Lede. Now, she was a woman that was shot the same night that Takeoff was mm -hmm. killed. She was mm -hmm. at the event and she was shot. Nobody talks about her. She didn't have uh, insurance, so she had to raise money to actually pay. She was shot in the head to pay her doctor bills. So uh, she actually uh, was just released from the hospital and she speaks about it. Or that arguing was kind of your first sign that something something was going on. Yeah, because Quavo, he was upset. So we, the party wasn't finna keep going on. Everything broke out and I tried to run, but I didn't go that far. So yeah, it was like, it was really like a movie, like shooting all, like all the way until I got down the escalator into the car and I'm just telling a person I'm with, like I'm scared. That you didn't realize takeoff was killed until After you got home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually was going through it. I was sad that it ended up like that but I was just uh, grateful that I did because the place that it hit in my head I just feel like it it was a miracle wow mm. wow she said that the person that was with her picked her up off the floor when she was shot you know dragged her carried her downstairs to the car and drove her to the hospital so wow. thank god she's alive and she's home I all wonder right. if she god. raised enough money to cover all her fees to your point about her not having insurance I'm not sure I'm not sure. God bless that woman. Mm -hmm. Such yeah. a tragic situation. Mm -hmm. Is that the note you're going to end on for rumor report? You're not going to end on that, right? And, congr Friday, damn it. and congratulations to, to Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. They revealed the sex and name of their newborn baby. Okay. They welcomed the baby January 13th. Okay, that's a high. Uh, they have shared their, uh, and let me see, let me see. The Esty Maxine Stevens is the newborn's baby's name. Esty Maxine Stevens. So okay. congratulations. That's to a them. high. Drop on the clue yeah. for the legends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say, since it is Freaky Freaky Friday, okay, for anybody out there who is influenced by Young Miami and you want to try golden showers <laughs> this weekend, just know you got to do that in a cold weather state. I was thinking that's too hot for that in Miami to have somebody just peeing on you. It so stink. if you're going to do it, do it in a cold weather state. You know what I mean? Do it in the shower. 
Or don't do it. Can I? He is nasty. <laughs> I got nasty. something better to say. A better thing to a more positive note. You were talking about John Legend. John Legend is on a song running with my boy Jay Ivy. You know Jay Ivy. Hey, Jay Ivy. Jay Ivy's mm-hmm. nominated for a Grammy. So everybody download the song running because it's a dope song. It's Slick Rick, Jay Ivy, and uh John Legend in verse. And Scoot to Jay song. Ivy. He, uh, right. he, he, he performed, performed New Year's in Ghana. Eve. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dope. That was good. Right. At Bose's party. Yes. All right. Well, it's the Breakfast Club, the People's Choice Mixes up next. We throw it back on a Friday. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday? With DraftKings Sportsbook Same Game Parlays, you can pocket more cash when you can buy multiple bets from one game. Download the app, sign up with code ENVY, that's E-N-V-Y, and get a special offer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got to salute and thank our guest host this morning. Yes, indeed. Ms. Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross. Thank you guys for joining us this morning. Two of the machetes. Thanks, Thanks Breakfast us. Club. Did you have fun? Yeah. So much it was fun. early. Y'all be yeah, stretching I'm a morning on person, this so this is right on my schedule. Now, how yeah. many machetes is it? Ten. Is ten of y'all? Yeah, it's okay. ten of us. Wow. Shout out to the machetes. Okay. Should well, we name them? Do we have time to name them? No. Sure. Yes, yeah. you do. Of course yeah. you do. All right. Oh, you uh, don't want it's a secret society? <laughs> yes, it's a secret. <laughs> wow. I mean, they can see I, I, just, I, just, I think the main thing is I get worried about like when we went to went on a trip, they decided to call us Cabo Caucus. Oh, I just think we got people right now. They did. It was dumb. But I'm just saying like. We have, we have friends that are legitimately going through it right what? now. Latasha Brown just lost her son. Angela <laughs> is the person who brought a lot of us together. Like, our common ground was yep, yep, Angela. Yep. Um, but she, there was just a lot going on. We all got attacked um, or routinely get attacked online. Um, and so it was great just to have this sisterhood. Mm-hmm. And I would, like, credit credit Angela. With she definitely, I, she's always very humble and is like, no, I didn't. But she did. She brought a lot of us together. So shout out to the machetes, Carrie Champion, Jamel Hill, Latasha Brown, Alicia. Guards, so please take the. Is it too late to take the Black Census? Uh, Alicia is doing the Black Census, uh, Black Future Club, uh, Brittany Packnett, Cunningham, Joy Reed, my sister, Joy Ann Reed, holding it down. Um, Angela, Rye, me, Aaron Sunny Haynes. Hostin, Aaron Haynes, who's at the 19th. I think that's everybody. That's why I didn't want to name them because I would definitely <laughs> like, I forget somebody. You, you said Latasha Brown. Yeah, I said Latasha. What's y'all color? Yeah, we don't. She's we so we don't do. We don't do none of that. Black. We, 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 encourage, we encourage black folks everywhere to have a tribe like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the truth. And I'll name everybody because I, I literally will forget somebody. That's why I won't do it. <laughs> right. I think I got everybody. Many. I think right. you did good. I, right. I would have forgotten. When we come back, we got the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have our guest hosts, Miss Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross. Now, do you guys want to do the positive note? Or do you want Charlemagne to? He could do it. You make up. You can make up for some of your nonsense today. Say, leave it on a positive <laughs> what note. Non- All what of nonsense. your nonsense. Leave what on a positive should note. Should we say? Should I? Can I do something about living life like it's golden? <laughs> Choose to be grateful today. Breakfast club, bitches. We all finished or y'all done? <laughs> 